What's up, everybody? Pico CTF 2022. Let's dive back in. I'm over here on my computer screen. I am running a Cali Linux virtual machine. I'm on the website for Pico CTF 2022 over at picoctf.org in the compete section for this year's game. And we're moving into the fifth page of challenges, which I'm super excited about. This is what, our 49th challenge? There are 66 in the game. We're still cruising along. This challenge is in the web exploitation category called SQLi Lite. I'm going to assume this is SQLite with SQL injection, um, and we can go ahead and launch the instance that is a deployable on-demand startup container. Now, before we dive into this, I know in previous videos we have played with SQL. We open it up in a, I suppose, a psql or a Postgres SQL. We're using a command line to interact with it. However, this one, I'm going to assume, is SQLite uh, running in the background. And SQLite, I, I think I alluded to in that previous video, is another database engine, but it's not a standalone app. It's a library that software developers can embed and, and excuse me, embed in their apps. It belongs to the family of embedded databases, but oftentimes it will write to a single file that will allow you to work with uh, single, SQL or a database. Now, the way that we have kind of played with SQL before was that we were using uh, just manual commands and running them within a command line interactive browser. Now, uh, I have to note, we're going to be playing with SQL injection very, very likely in this uh, challenge. SQL injection, if you aren't familiar, though I have a ton of videos on this, it's a common attack vector that uses malicious SQL code for backend database manipulation to access information that was not intended to be displayed. Uh, it's abbreviated right as SQL I or SQL SQL injection, the I representing it. And when I noticed that on the challenge, okay, I'm going to assuming this is SQL I, SQL injection for SQL Lite. Just kind of, hey, mixing these together here. It says, can you log into this website? Sure. We could try, hey, our own simple usernames, like please subscribe with the password, please subscribe. However, oh, that totally failed. Uh, <laughs> last pass is coming to save the day. Look, our username and password were incorrect, but it shows us our SQL query that was actually entered here. Now note, our name and password are separated here within the SQL query that's executed, and the select from probably looks very familiar from that previous video. Uh, our name and password are separated by quotes or an apostrophe to denote this is a string value. Now, in some cases, for super weak, very insecure, and vulnerable applications, they'll tack on and add in, like concatenating in Python, just using a plus sign to put strings and cram them together, uh, our own input. That is where the incredible danger of SQL injection could be, because the data that we might provide we could trick the backend server, the process, the program running this thing, and manipulate our data to look like SQL code, where we might just actually add in new conditions and new logic for how we want to return or query data. When we select all from users where name is equal to this and password is equal to this, and is adding a, hey, both of these conditions must be true for us to retrieve a result. That's how we could sync, okay, a username with this password is in our database. But what if we were to specify, look, I want to get in the middle of this command. I want to break this syntax here and specify our own query, our own, our own new criteria for returning results. What if we were to use a different operator rather than and and get in the way of it or chop it off with something like an or condition where only one value has to return true for fields to be displayed and data to be returned back from the database. That's why why you might often see in other SQL injection payloads, you have a very, very common or one equals one. This is a, a great example here. Uh, this repository it looks like it has a ton of stuff. Uh, I noticed payload all the things just as well. But note, hey, a lot of these might end up using just regular strings to quote or put in potential uh, database information. Notice an or one equals one follows here, and that would actually give, hey, the criteria of, yeah, one is equal to one. It's a constant. They're always going to be the exact same value. However, some of these are actually going to end up ending or terminating with a specific character. Oftentimes you might see a hashtag or an octothorpe, right? The pound symbol. And that is normally the comment character 
like the common character you see in Python when we write code, or the two forward slashes in C or JavaScript or whatever, and that will comment out the rest of the query. So if we were actually to use our, hey, name equals whatever data we supply, and then comment out the whole rest of this, it's as if it's not even checking for the password anymore. We removed that and criteria from the condition, commenting it out. That's why we could use our or syntax, and that works very, very well. Now, I mentioned the Octothorpe, though. But here, let's play with this. Say we weren't able to tell we were using single quotes. Let's go back, and we can experiment. Let's do an or one equals one, and just slap it in. I'll copy and paste it for both fields. Shut up, LastPass. That doesn't work all that well, right? But we know, okay, our, our double quotes would still give a login failed because they're using single quotes in here. You might not know that in a different application. It's worthwhile to test both, but we aren't commenting out or removing the whole rest of this payload. So let's try and switch it. We could use or one equals one, paste that in here. Didn't really seem to do much because we still had another trailing thing. It looked like it broke the page. It didn't tell us login, login successful or login failed. We didn't get any results. Maybe this erred from SQL because we still have a dangling quotation mark and now we, our strings don't match as they are supposed to be. This opens and closes a string. This opens a string and this closes that previous string but now we again have a dangling quotation mark at the end here. So the way we can avoid this is by using that or one equals one. I'll use the Octothorpe because that's a comment often used for MySQL. But MySQL is only a structured query language uh, engine for that specific system, uh, database management system, right? And it has a different syntax. What we were guessing and alluding to in this challenge was that we're using SQLite. Now, SQLite uses two hyphens for their uh, comment. Now we could try using that. Let's use an or one equals one, but rather than the hashtag octothorpe pound symbol, we'll use the two hyphens to clobber and remove that and condition at the very, very end of the SQL query. Fingers crossed. Ooh, it says, hey, logged in. But can you see the flag? It is in plain sight. Uh, in which case I'm selecting all the text not giving me anything. Let's view the source code of the web page. Oh, uh, and that's pretty dumb. <laughs> you might be able to see it all from the side here. I hit control U on my keyboard to view the HTML. It says your flag is look like, looks like you solved it. And that's all that it took. Nice, right? Really not a whole lot to work through in that challenge. Just the know-how and the understanding of, okay, what uh, was our SQL injection vulnerability and how's that going to be structured? What is this thing that we're working with? Uh, I realize this is a deployable container instance, so I don't think I'm going to end up churning out just a quick get flag script for this. Obviously, you could just use curl to make this post request with the username and password field and then grep out the returned flag for us. But with that, oh, did I even grab it? I don't think I did. Let's copy this paste it in, and that ha again has a significant number of solves, so maybe it was a quick breath of fresh air from all the binary exploitation that we've been up to in the past couple. Let's make a directory for SQL Lite, and I will echo that flag into a flag.txt. We can just say that one is done, and that is the end of that challenge. Quick and easy, pretty fundamental, pretty basic, but I really, really recommend, hey, you explore and tinker with what SQL injection might be on other payloads. I really recommend, hey, checking out payloads, all the things. Payloads, all the things, SQL injection? Yeah, oh, SQL inertia, what are you doing? What, what, Google? <laughs> This is a fantastic and incredible resource on GitHub that showcases a lot of different syntax uh, and semantics for doing different attacks, performing a beating up different vulnerabilities with different kinds of uh, exploits. Obviously, SQL injection has a huge section to it. There is so much cool stuff you could do with this. Um, this is only the tip of the iceberg if you aren't familiar with it, but I got to say, uh, there's a lot that can be done. So explore, kind of get a feel for some of these things, take a look at what all the potential is, and that, sure, you could 
identify databases. You could automate a lot of this. There are tools that do that like SQL map. There's no SQL map for different variations of stuff like MongoDB and others. Uh, explicit SQL injection to return values out, blind SQL injection to be able to actually hey, loop through data and uncover stuff. A lot of really fun stuff in SQL injection and I enjoy it. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. I hope you learned something. hope you got something out of it. I know, hey, maybe we're back to the fundamentals of Pico for a little bit or maybe our web category just keeps <laughs> bumming us out. But thanks so much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all this YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe, etc. You know the drill. Love you, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.